Alright guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, today, you'll actually be able to see there's going to be two video uploads. Uh, that's going to be due to me actually doing two different video angles. So you guys are actually going to be able to see kind of up close from my right and from in front of me to see kind of what the deck build is as well as just kind of uh, where we're going. Um, today we're going to be going over an Agents of Destruction deck, which you'll be able to see with one of the videos pretty easily, which will be right here to my right. Um, you should be able to see that the this is an AOD deck because I'm kind of sorting a little bit here. Um, but today we're going over AOD, and mainly I'm going over this deck um, because with set 10 coming out, it's very controlly. And I've noticed that AOD is a very much control deck if you build it this way. Uh, I'm going to tell you all now, this deck is not set. It's not, like, play-tested. It's not, you know, going to be up there very competitive with everybody. Uh, I have done some minor handwork with it. Just kind of see where it's going. Making sure that... Uh, at least the hands work well. So for now, it's kind of a, it's in that limbo stage where once you build the deck, you know it functions, but it's just not quite there. So I know it works. I'm gonna tell you right now though, it's a very malleable deck. Nice. Anyway, so I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a very malleable deck. This is going to be a deck that's built so that you can kind of do whatever you want with it. You can change counters, you can change energy. For the most part, the only thing that's core in this is the AODs themselves and the SCR. Uh, the SCR is still technically malleable because it's one of two. You can use either Broly or you can use uh, Arcane Absorption Majin Buu. Either or works really well on this deck. Uh, I'll tell, I will literally tell you which deck, which cards are malleable, where they can change out. Uh, you can kind of look into what's going to be your play style more than anything. If you're going to run red, yellow instead of blue, green, or blue, yellow, green, however you want to do it, it's up to you. Because ultimately, with the leader and with the setup, this deck is one of those decks that, for me personally, it can go, it is just wide open. Um, especially with this leader card, uh, you can just go anywhere with it. So with that introduction, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start with the leader card. The leader card is the promo Zeno uh, critical. It all it comes with a permanent ability that gives it red, yellow, blue, and green. So it's a base red color already. With its permanent skill, it will get yellow, green, and blue as well. This one also on the front side, its second half of its permanent is if your opponent's leader card is awakened, he will get plus 5,000 power. So if you run into surge decks, that you know they can awaken you know turn two if they really want to even turn one if they really really just want to be crazy with it they can awaken turn one well Zeno's designed to be like okay that's fine I will be able to at least keep up with you in power so it's not too worried about it uh, and then it's awaken is you know four or less draw two now when you get to the opposite side it loses critical and it loses the plus 5k it still has the three extra colors so it's still running blue, green, and yellow on top of its base color of red. And then its auto is when it attacks, draw a card. Now you'll see why I run this card or as the leader and then you'll also see why I say this deck is so malleable when we get to this. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start with the first nine cards which is all counter attacks. So I run three Light Bullet, three Flying Nimbus, two Time Magic, and one Master Roshi Forged of Will. Now, this is the first thing I want to tell you. These nine cards are your first malleable cards. They can be changed to almost anything. You can change them to Sensu Beans and Dimension Magics. You can change it to Topos. You can change it to the new Set 10 Counterplays. You can change it to Vegeta the Cruels and uh, Champa the Trickster. You really can go as wide as you want with this. I recommend 9 because in this deck, I found that 9 is really a good number to kind of just be able to 
flow in the deck, keep pulling them at critical times that I ultimately need them. So I find that this is actually probably one of the better times to have only nine, uh, just to have nine of them. And with the deck size uh, being increased this last month to from 50 cards to 50 to 60 cards, uh, having nine counters in your deck, no matter if they're counter plays or counter attacks, is just a very good tool, a very good thing to just kind of have ready to go just in case. So that first nine, however you want to play it, if you want to run red yellow, and you want to run topos, you want to run the great ape that I see is like three hundred dollars or some odd stupid number. I mean it is a crazy high number. You can run those. You can run just about anything, but that's for your nine right there. All right, next we're gonna go into my energy plays, which I use two Android 17s. Which if you guys have been playing Dragon Ball for a while, you know Android 17s is a staple in any blue green. It ignores energy exhaust as long as you have one blue-green energy already in your energy uh, pool. And Kefla I have in here as energy, but she's also kind of a backup for a rival. Uh, tap one yellow, a rival it out with a blue-yellow. So ultimately, she's a backup, but at the same time, she's also a very good energy base. Just to make sure I have that yellow in there, ready to go. Now, again, this is, the, this is malleable. So the first... I mean, 9, 13, 25 cards. The first 25 cards of this deck are very malleable. The, these first 25 I'm going over will are easily interchangeable with whatever you want it to do. If you want to run red yellow, like I'm saying, because of Heartfelt Plea and Pans. If you want to run blue green because of Song Gohan, Search Piccolo. If you want to run blue yellow, however you want to run it this deck is very much interchangeable with anything it's just for this deck profile I'm pretty much going to give you the basics of how I run my playstyle and where you should kind of gauge what you want so you know nine counters four cards that are almost strictly based for energy uh, if you're going to run you know the Beerus or excuse me not the Beerus but Wisa Spectator you know that's going to ignore energy exhaust Android 17 ignoring energy exhaust when it charges at least you'll know kind of where you want to go and which how many you need. Uh, you can run you know four androids, four Weeses, however you want to do it. But ultimately that's what I'm using for my energy. Next, super combos. I run a 3-1 split. Again, very malleable. However your deck plays. Red, yellow, blue, green, blue, red. However you want to do it. The super combos that came out in set 9 are going to be your biggest friends. And on top of that, because of how I built my AOD deck, these guys are just the best ones because they're both some form of control. Android 18 being super comboed, when you super combo with her, uh, you can uh, your opponent choose a card in hand and place it at the bottom of their deck. And then Zamatsu being that uh, your opponent chooses, or you choose your opponent's leader card or battle card and tap it down. It goes into rest mode. Board control, hand control. Something that you'll see later AODs are very, just miraculously good for. Uh, especially if you're going to run Arcane Majin Buu. Um, you'll see that this deck is just very much a control deck. I, I don't think I've ever built anything as control as this. Alright, next we're going to get into support. I run four Janemba's Resident of Destructions and four Bojacks. And then the last support is for Baba D's. Now, I'll tell you right now, Janemba, that is pretty much going to be your energy. That's going to be another energy card. If you can Aegis Janemba out, by all means do it. That's ultimately what you're going to try to do is Aegis Janemba in. Um, Bojack is kind of my one that it can be used as energy. Or I can rival it out if I combo with, say, Janemba to my AODs or my super combo I can rival that out if I'm just not getting my AODs out I can at least get resonant destruction out so again a nice little backup with a rival works really well and then Baba D if you guys have seen any AODs I'm pretty sure they run Baba D because first off it has barrier second off you can only play one of them that's it's permanent but 
when you play it, it gets rid of the specified cost of any of your AODs. And then finally, it reduces the cost of your AODs by one. Now, ultimately, this is probably the biggest staple. So ultimately, I want two in opening hand because I can charge one and play one turn one. So turn two, I can play my three drop AODs very quickly with no problems. The other two will become combo pieces, and you'll see why when we get to my SCR, which is Arcane Absorption Margin Boo. So we're actually going to leave those right there. Next, we'll go into the AODs. We'll just go to two at a time right now. So first one is going to be Android 13. Um, critical, 20,000. Now, this is not one I'm going to pull out with Arcane Majin Boo, just because it doesn't have a one play ability. It does have a nice activate main that taps two. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards, KO it. If you're, uh, Then your opponent chooses one card from their hand and place in their drop area. Hand control, board control, like I said earlier. Probably the best deck I've ever built to do this. That is what this guy's in there for, is that board and hand control in one turn. If you have Baba D out, you play this for two, tap two more, and then voila, you've just wiped something off their board, say it was a key piece. Uh, I know if you're doing, if you run into a triple flash uh, pan deck, uh, if they pull out that three drop Goku GT, that is actually a five drop when you're four or less life. This guy can pop that with no issues, and it takes something out of their hand. So that's uh, Android 13, run four of, because it's a nice 20,000 crit. Next is Bojack. Now this would be one of the ones I pull out of my drop area warp with Arcane Absorption Majin Buu, because he has an auto when you play him. Uh, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barriers, switch it to rest mode. Then he has a nice little activate main for two uh, generic energy. If this card's in rest mode, choose your opponent's leader card, switch it to rest mode. It can't be switched to active mode until the end of your next your opponent's next turn. So again, a board control. So if I play this, I could choose a battle card, tap it down, swing for twenty thousand, tap two down, and then I can tap your leader card, and that's not untapping until the next until the end of your next turn, your opponent's next turn. Nice control, and again, it's auto is one played. So with Arcane Absorption Majin Boo, you can play this uh, the Bojack really quickly. Next, we run four Janemba and four Lord Slug. Now, Lord Slug and Vegeta are the two reasons I run the energy I run. It's because this one needs green, Vegeta needs blue. We'll get into that as soon as we get into you know those AODs. So first, we'll do Janemba, twenty thousand crit again. I mean that's a really hard hitter for three. I'm gonna hit you for twenty in critical. This also has a when played from hand or warp. You'll, at the end of your turn, you'll untap one of your energy. So basically, Bobbity will drop it by one. This itself will drop it again by one. So it's ultimately only a two drop. Now this activate main though, I like Janemba's activate main, especially in this AOD. So you play Janemba, you swing for 20,000 critical. Then you can activate his main, which is you send him to your warp, you draw a card. Then your opponent takes the top three cards from their deck and puts them in their drop area. So they mill three cards. And then with Arcane Absorption Majin Buu, you can pull this back out from warp, replay it. When play trigger happens, swing 20,000 critical, activate main again. So you're drawing and deck controlling them. Very OP little card, especially in an AOD deck that's just going to bring stuff out. Next is the 4 of Lord Slug. Now, his activate main I do not use, because as you've seen throughout the deck profile, I do not have any other Lord Slug's, Slug's army. So his activate main is tap a green, grab a Slug's army, and play it as long as it's not the AOD Lord, uh, Lord Slug. I don't have any, so his activate main is actually pointless to me, but I ran the green in the deck just to kind of have it. Um, but his auto is, again, when you play this guy... Uh, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and place in their drop area. So hand control, played, Arcane Absorption Majin Buu will come into play. So if it plays with Bobby D underneath it, you pull out Lord Slug, boom, you control again. And the last AOD before the SCR is Vegeta. Again, an auto win play. Uh, you choose one of your opponent's battle cards for 25k or less, KO it. 
he has an activate main of one blue, one colorless. And that if your leader card is uh, red, he gets plus 10k, double strike, and dual attack. Ultimately, he becomes a 30,000 dual attack, double striker. And then finally, Arcane Absorption Majin Buu is my SCR. Uh, triple strike, ultimate, activate main for 6. Pull a uh, Bobbidi out from your drop area, play him on top, auto. If Bobbidi's underneath this guy, pull out five from your drop or warp area AODs and play them. So now you see why two go in the drop area because this guy right here pulls out five and ultimately just becomes the biggest hitting streak you can have. And that is the deck profile, guys. That is really it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave it. Uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Uh, I will be back again with another deck profile. If you guys have any suggestions or questions or something you want to see on this channel, go ahead and let me know, and I'll go ahead and upload that video. Uh, I have, I don't know, maybe 60 decks we can go through, and any play style you play, I can ultimately have a deck for you. And so if you want it, ask for it. I can either do a build on for the YouTube channel for you guys for whatever deck you want built if I don't have it built or show you at least the deck profile. Alright guys, be safe.